Hi guys, if you know me, I'm brutally honest when I make my review, so I'm going to give you a brutal and honest review of Jordan after living there for three years. Now I'm going to give you the pros and the cons. There's a bunch of pros and there's a lot of huge cons, so let's talk about that. Now please understand before we start that some pros might be con for other people, okay? Like Jordan, for me, an absolute con is the smoking. Everybody in this bloody country smokes left, right and center. In hospitals, in government, you see people smoking everywhere. It's basically Canada in the 80s, okay, where everybody, where you had ashtrays, you know, when you waited in line at the restaurant or something like that, and you had ashtrays there and people smoke everywhere. Well, that's basically Jordan today. Now, of course, if you're a smoker, you might be super happy to have moved to a country where everybody smoke everywhere and nobody cares. Now, there are some supermarket and there are some uh, stores that will not allow smoking, but, you know, like most of the places, no issue whatsoever. Now, another con or pro, depending on who you are, if you're a local, you're gonna say it's a con because it's true that for them it's very expensive, but for foreigners, oh my God, awesome housing. Huge villa with indoor elevator, 9,000 square feet with indoor pool for about $4,000 a month. Essentially, a small little apartment in New York, okay, costs you the exact same price as a massive villa in Jordan and we're talking like huge like I said with indoor elevator four floor massive kitchen very beautiful terrace on the roof absolutely gorgeous places super nice as far as the the lighting and the advanced uh, openness of the place this is awesome housing in Amman now a big huge con in Amman is schools Seriously, uh, even ACS, American School, uh, the International Community School, ICS, or MAS, the American supposed school, Modern American School, which is more like Modern Arabic School, forget about it, okay? It's nice, nice building, nice whatever, looks good, but the level of education is atrocious. And if you're a girl, it's even worse. And they're not true international school. They charge the price, but the truth is, uh, most of everything, like the teachers, they're locals, they are basically not speaking English very much, and this is not very good. This is one thing that, uh, yeah, we had a lot of issues while in Amman. Taxi, big pro, very, very cheap. Okay, of course, like in most countries, the ride from the airport to Amman is probably going to cost you $20, but I mean... Once you're in the city, you can pretty much go anywhere, uh, five, six kilometers for about three, four JD. Very, very cheap. So six dollars. That's amazing. Taxis are great. Now install yourself, Karim. It's their local app. It's the equivalent of Uber. And you're going to have a lot of ease to travel around, taxi to pick you up. Don't expect them to speak much English. And a lot of the drivers smoke in the car. That's a bit sad. If you're a woman, uh, yeah, be ready to change your phone number often because you're gonna end up with one stars as a rating by the drivers because they're gonna try to whatever cruise you or make cheap passes at you. This is something that a lot of women have complained in the country. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, you're gonna end up changing your number to reapply with another app because huh, you're gonna get harassed a little bit on that one. This is sad, but I don't know. As a man, I've never experienced this, but as a woman, yeah, that's something that I've been told uh, that is an issue. Another pro is definitely the fact that the country is liberal. Uh, you know, during Ramadan, you can eat, you can go to the supermarket, nobody's gonna bother you, even if you're in a tourist attractions like uh, Petra, stuff like that. Uh, restaurants are gonna op be open for lunchtime during Ramadan, it's okay. Uh, people are not really uh, bothering you if you're not Muslim, that's okay, it's not a big deal. You can dress pretty much the way you want. A little bit more on the conservative side, but still, it's pretty relaxed compared to other Muslim countries I've lived in, including Egypt. Another pro, the country is safe, okay? Um, I would say, one, well, I'm gonna talk to you about customs and um, the military and the police, like, less so, but if you're dealing with other people, you know, like, that's pretty safe, I have to admit. Um, another con, English. Uh, if you speak with people around and you realize they, they are Arab and they speak English, they're probably Palestinian, not Jordanian. It's really crazy. And by the school, okay, and the, the way the school teaches, I can understand why these guys don't speak English. But this is a country where I had a lot of issues uh, with English. Uh, people don't speak it much and the signs and everything, it's pretty difficult to get around uh, without speaking Arabic. Another thing too is I've noticed that the Jordanian are very proud people. So instead of like, for example, when you're in China and somebody doesn't understand you, they're going to say, you know, I don't understand you. And then you're going to be able to say, okay, 
okay, fine, then repeat and try to figure out. But the Jordanian are going to say, yeah, 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 but they won't understand you and that could create a lot of issues. So I would recommend that you lower on the idioms, okay, so the stuff that you normally would say in the slangs in the US and Canada, Europe. Uh, limit this to a maximum, slow down the rate of speech, uh, especially for me, I speak fast. So speak slower and try to make sure they understand before going forward because yeah, English is a big issue in the country, even at customs, uh, especially at the airport, you'd think that those guys would speak English, but uh, let's talk about that now and you'll understand why these guys probably don't speak English. Now I understand why the people at customs don't speak English, okay, to be honest with you, because most of them are yeah, I mean, you know, nepotism, uh, hiring your cousin, your brother, your friends, and, you know, having less than high school degree and being at customs with foreigners uh, doesn't help anything, okay? It's not illegal to have a drone in the country. It's illegal to fly it, but nobody cares. That's why that's all I have left. Two batteries from my drone. My drone was taken at the airport like more time than I can remember. Sometimes they kept it at the airport. Some other time it vanished. The last time it went to the military for whatever reason, instead of being kept at the airport. And when I left, I had to go to the army to try to get it out. These people didn't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Your drone is in my desk, but you need an authorization. You need this, you need this. Uh, backshish, whatever, uh, forget about it. Technology is the same thing. This is a 360 camera and I had to buy it again because they took it when I arrived at the airport. I have this microphone here, which is basically the new DJI microphone. And yeah, it was taken at the airport too. Why? Because it's considered a walkie talkie. It's not a walkie talkie, it's a microphone. But for these people, It's army, military, me afraid, oh, dangerous, okay? This is basically the idea when you go to custom with these people. You're gonna have a lot of issues. People get their stuff taken all the time. Stuff you because of the toy? Yeah, because of this. Are you serious? You see? This is toys. Yeah, for my kids. Wow. And then two hours just waiting for this one. And then you're gonna have a board at the back and you're gonna see and you're gonna whatever, all the luggage that are taken aside because people had anything that these people are freaking out about bringing in their country is a big issue. Technology is also a big issue in Jordan, okay? Uh, beside an iPhone, I think that's the limit of what you'll be able to buy. Very basic computers, uh, basic laptop, iPhone, TVs, and that's basically the limit, okay? A VR and the rest of the stuff more advanced technology, forget about it, they're still in the stone age when it comes to that. Now another problem, bringing your car in the country. This is a big, big issue in Jordan, okay? We've never had any issue bringing our car anywhere. We've traveled and visited and lived in nine different countries. I've never had an issue with cars, but in Jordan, they couldn't figure out where the serial number was. They took the car apart without knowing how to put it back together. They didn't want me to bring it to BMW to fix it because and to find the serial number because it wasn't clear at customs, so catch 22, and I had to remove my tainted window after two months because, hey, they just figure out that it's not allowed even as a diplomat. So yeah, the, the rules, they cannot point to you the rules in the books, okay? They don't know, they just take them out of their head like this and you just have to go along with it because, well, it's not your country and that's the end of it, okay? They cannot explain, same thing with the drone, same thing with everything else. They cannot give you, a, a, you know, an actual law of why this is not allowed. They don't understand it, they don't care and, and they just like somebody, if you're lucky, you pass. If you're not lucky, you get screwed. The car is the same thing, so just be very careful. Driving around, not an issue whatsoever. The roads are so-so, uh, but uh, you'll be able to drive okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, not much tickets or stuff. You have to be careful of the camera. There's a lot of speed traps everywhere. But uh, if you drive, let's say, to Aqaba, you could drive at a decent speed and the road's relatively good. Oh, uh, that puts us absolutely nowhere. Tell you what, man, why don't we go to Petra and make something that's got to take a trip? The tourist area, if you have your residence ID, you'll be able to save quite a lot when you go to Petra and places like this. This is nice. This is one thing that they're doing, which is pretty good. Even if you go to the Dead Sea for certain areas, uh, you're going to get discount because you're a resident. Uh, this is cool. Uh, your diplomatic ID doesn't worth anything because they don't seem to understand what it's written at the back, even if it's in Arabic, which it says that you're a diplomat, they just don't give a damn. It's the one country I've lived where 
uh, seriously, they don't understand what that means and they don't respect your right in any way, shape or form as a diplomat coming at the airport, going, uh, yeah, they really don't care. Uh, this is one place that I really felt, uh, yeah, uh, that was a big issue. Now, there, another thing that I like about Jordan is going to be the fourth season. I mean, in the winter, you have a tiny bit of snow, not much, uh, maybe one or two days a year. It's not like Canada where you're going to have an accumulation of snow, but at least it's cool in the winter. And this is nice. At least it's not just like warm all the time. This is kind of cool. Uh, disadvantage of the season, the summer is pretty warm and there's a bunch of sandstorms. So if you cut in one, I have to admit, uh, if your window is left open, you're going to have to clean your house for quite a long time because it's tiny particle of dust. It's relatively polluted. Uh, this is one thing with a man because everybody's burning diesel. Uh, yeah, there's a soot or something. You have to wash your car almost all the time. Um, you can hire somebody to do that. Normally, they're going to charge $2, $3 uh, you know, to clean the car twice a week, maybe $50 a month uh, or 50 JD per month, so $75 a month, and they will clean your car a few times a week. Uh, this is nice. Most buildings have guards that can be very helpful in that case. Now, this is sadly a, a pro for me, a con for others. Uh, salaries in the country are relatively low. So if you want to hire yourself a maid, like a Filipino maid, for example, a live-in or something like that, um, you're going to be able to do that relatively easy. Almost every single uh, villas or houses, big apartments will have uh, a maid's room where uh, they have their own bathroom in their own room. It's not that big, but you know, it's basically the uh, decent size even compared to other places I've been. Uh, some are pretty big, so this is nice. So if you have living staff, a guard, then no problem. They can stay in the place, no issue, and it's relatively cheap, maybe four or $500 a month. Uh, you'll be able to get somebody full-time. This is nice. Now, of course, it's a desert, so understand the fact that water is going to be scarce sometimes. Uh, so you're going to have a lot of water tank on the roof. Make sure you have like quite a bit of, a, you know, like of leeway on this one, at least a month of reserve. And try to understand when you're going to run out of water so that way you can relax on your shower taking and stuff like that so that your water can be stretched. Because after that, once you run out of water, it could take quite a bit of time before you uh, get water again and you're gonna have to restart your pump and stuff. It's a bit of an issue. Uh, we've had quite a bit of a problem with that when we were in a map. Food. Uh, well, if you go to supermarket, okay, you're gonna have pretty much what you would have in North America. I mean, you can still buy pork, not in the supermarket. There are small stores that would sell it. I know two of them. Uh, it's not easily available, but you're still in an Islamic country. Same thing with wine and other spirits. Pretty expensive compared to other places, especially when you are, have lived in Europe or North America. You're gonna find that pretty expensive. It's a dry country, more or less. Uh, but the rest of the food, they're going to have a lot of stuff from the U.S., a lot of pre-made stuff. Uh, this is one thing for fresh food. Uh, in season, you could have like very good vegetable, very cheap. Uh, but most of the time, it's going to be tough to get. And the varieties are not that great. And the quality, you know, it doesn't last that long because it's very hot. So that's normal. So in the winter time, to get fresh veggies is a bit more difficult. Another con too is your landlock. Okay, yeah, technically you have access to the water. You're not officially landlocked, but if you have a car, uh, you basically cannot drive anywhere with it. Okay, so you'll need a permit to be able to come back from Israel, not to go to Israel, but to come back from Israel. If you want to go to the Gaza, you need to have a bunch of stuff. You're going to have to go to multiple uh, government offices, deal with all those people. And half of the time, they, of course, they don't speak English and it's very difficult. Uh, you cannot go to Syria, you cannot drive to Lebanon because you have to go to Turkey and Syria, you cannot go to Turkey because you have to go through Syria, and you cannot go to Iraq because it's Iraq. Uh, so yeah, um, so you're basically like condemned to stay in Jordan with your car and not really travel around. It, every single time I've asked and I go see my friends in Lebanon, everybody says no chance, you're not going to survive the trip uh, through Syria for three hours, you'll get you know, kidnap, your car's gonna get carjacked or you'll get shot. You cannot drive to Egypt because it's the same thing in the Golden Heights, uh, too dangerous to go there with your car. So you're pretty much condemned to stay uh, in Jordan if you have a car. There's no park, there's no pool, public pool, public park, greenery where you can go with your kids, uh, nothing. There's a lot of courses, like you can you know, bring your kid to martial art, dancing, piano lessons or whatever. But if you're talking about places, free places that you can just go with your kids to do something, then forget about that. Uh, yeah, the kingdom doesn't have any of that stuff. 
Now, hospitals, pretty good. Um, I think the, med the doctors are quite competent. There's a lot of hospitals that are very advanced, so that's not an issue. So this is pretty good. And the price is very, very cheap as well. Uh, I don't know, I didn't have an insurance, so basically that's, I, I didn't need to, but, and the price is very cheap, so that's fine. Uh, same thing for dentists and stuff like that. You know, you could fix your teeth for like $50 and, uh, you know, that's very cheap compared to North America or and Europe, of course, would be free, but North America, US, for example, uh, pretty at par with medical, but definitely uh, way, way, way cheaper. All right, let's come to the biggest issue in Jordan that you might be in trouble. And this is the thumbnail of this video, ban for life. All right, here is the issue. During uh, the pandemic, a lot of people were forced to stay in the country for a long time. Or if you come into the country, you're going to realize that after 30 days, you need to go to a police station to get your visa stamped. If you don't have it, they're going to charge you $2.50 per day until you leave. Now, the problem is, is that a lot of people, they don't have money. They don't realize this or, or even then in my case, I did it. And they still ask me to pay that amount of money when I left, because even though I had my ID and everything, uh, there was a 30 day gap where they couldn't give me the ID because they're too slow, government suck. So they couldn't give it to me. And yeah, I arrive at the airport and they say, well, you need, you, you need to give us $70, uh, otherwise you cannot leave the country. Now, $70 for one month is not a big deal, but if you're one year, two years, uh, and now that could come up and two people, three people, that could be thousands of dollars. It's exactly what happened to this guy at the airport and you, he needed to pay $2,600 in order to be able to leave the country. He didn't have the money, couldn't stay in the country, obviously. So basically, the only solution he had was ban me for life, okay? So I'll leave the country, I'll never return to your kingdom, and that's it, allow me to leave. And after a long negotiation, they allowed him to do that because they realized that, you know, yeah, he would keep staying in the country, he doesn't have the money, he'd be homeless. Uh, that would be a burden on other people, so they allowed him to leave. But you have to be very careful. This is a massive tourist trap. Even if your visa is valid, they're still gonna try to scheme, uh, you know, like money from you, like $60 a month. That's a thing that they don't tell you. On the US Embassy website, they sort of mention that 1.5 JD per day, but they just say you need to go to the police station. But the thing is, this is complicated. They don't speak English. Sometimes they don't understand what's going on. Uh, dealing with the police is not easy uh, in a police state. So yeah, you have to be very aware of this one and that could cost you quite a bit of money. So if you're in a country like that, be careful. So my overall impression, yes, okay, the king made a cameo for seven seconds in Star Trek Voyager, but uh, he's not a member of the Federation, he's more like a Ferengi. But the point is, uh, overall, okay, Jordan is a developing nation where the people are somewhat oppressed by the government who uh, does not understand, don't care, no empathy, no sympathy for the people, no sympathy for the tourists. Uh, when I had my incident with the drone and I went to every single military places to try to find where the drone was, uh, these people didn't know, didn't care, didn't help. Uh, you know, the guy said, oh, five minutes for a signature, but, you know, like two days later, uh, staying in the room, uh, just basically drinking coffee, waiting for them to do the signature. They never did. And I lost my drone in the end. They just, they could help. They don't care. This is basically uh, the biggest issue you have in Jordan is dealing with the government. Uh, and this is a big problem. Other than that, other than the government, the rest of the people and everything else is fine. I've heard like, welcome to Jordan, which meant more like, yeah, this is how it is here, deal with it kind of thing, more than like you're welcome in the country. But overall, it's fine. It's not the worst country I've lived in and uh, it's definitely okay for three years. Uh, that's it. Take care, guys. See you in the next video.